Once the brake control, you will clear to land. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now making our final approach on the Games Master Resort. We wish you an enjoyable stay. Thank you. Welcome to the Games Master Oil Rig, where chapped lips and a ruddy complexion are just some of the hardships we endure for a spot of games playing. So while I slip on a bit of anti-chafe, let's go over to the installation's chief red coat, Uncle Games Master. Greetings, and welcome to the Games Rig. For this evening's hors d'oeuvre, I've opted for one of my favourites, Lemmings 2. The lemming is an exasperating breed of rodent that seems hell-bent on trying to kill itself. Your job is to guide these lemmings to safety by assigning them with certain functions. In the special Games Master level that I've devised for you, you have two minutes in which to save all the 50 lemmings that are released. Good luck. Indulging in some non-violent action in this challenge is a young bloke from Erith. Please welcome Gavin Hansford. <laughs> Now, Gavin, you're, you're no stranger to cute, floppy things, because I believe you once appeared on Wackaday. Oh, that was a very long time ago. I was young, I was foolish, OK? Let's not talk so, about it. Did you actually meet rock legend Timmy Mallet? Oh, yes, he's very, very nice. Well, I know he's a big fan of the show, and I'm sure he'll be cheering you on tonight, Gavin. If you'd like to sit yourself down in a games playing chair, we'll get ready to start. Renegade's main man, Tom Watson, is with me for this one. Hello again, Tom. Evening, Dominic. Right now, Tom, this is the sequel to Lemmings. Tell us some of the different things you can do in this one. Well, you won't find the same functions really anymore. There are runners, there are jumpers, there are balloonists, um, there are stompers instead of diggers. It's, it's a very much different game. He's got 50 to get home, he's given 50, he can't afford a single mistake. Okay then, well, Tom's gone over the challenge again for me, really. 50 Lemmings to get home when any one of them dies and Gavin's challenge is over. Gavin, are you ready? Ready. Then off you go. Okay, so off he goes. We can see the clock in the bottom right corner of the screen ticking well, away there. Well, that's right. First, first thing he's done, quite right, he's got an archer out. He's moved the cannon. He's putting. The, he's trying to get an arrow into the bottom of that green area. There he goes. That's the one he wants. He's now going to set so a what's, balloonist So what's he done to with those over. two then now? Is well, that wedge the cannon in that's that position? Right. The balloonist will be able now to catch hold of that arrow and just hover there. There he is. Okay. He's now going to create another archer, get another arrow over, burst the balloon, and he can hopefully get that lemming into the cannon. Okay, Let's see I... how he does. Right, then the lemming is going to go in the cannon. I see there he changed him into that spanner block. He yeah. That means he can use the cannon. Use he's objects. now going to change him, I think, into a stomper. There okay, we go. So he's, he's going to stomp, stomp down. through this level. Okay, the exit for the audience's purpose is just below where the other batch of lemmings are just now. So it's That's right, he's, he's going to a circus tent. Now, here goes the lemming. Now, what we want is a run. And he's running now. He's got to get ready to get him to jump over the gap. Jump over the stand. Over he yes, goes. he does it. Excellent. He's made it. Now, now there's the exit there, the circus tent. That's right. Now what he's got to do is he's back to an archer again, and he's got to put some arrows into the other side because he's going to send the lemmings through. The lemmings would normally die if they had to if go they all the way through that wall. Yeah, that's correct. The now, arrows will break the fall. Is the arrow up high enough? Well, there's only one way we're going to find that out, Dominic. He's all right for time. Here come the lemmings. Seconds left. And yes, they're a bit stunned, but oh, they're no, making they're it okay. in. They're stunned, they're going to make it in. I think the time's fine. He's got 23 seconds left. He looks as if he's doing it. He needs to get them all in. He's going to do it. It's just a question of time. 16, 15, 30. This is going to be no problem. A perfect completion, Dominic. Yeah, Absolutely yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 11 seconds left. And Gavin is triumphant. Congratulations, yeah. 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 Gavin. Well done, Gavin. That was that looked an absolute breeze. Was there any heady moments for you? Yeah, there were a few. One of them was at the beginning when I couldn't get the arrow in the right place. Mm -hmm. I did that okay in the end. Well, I think you've made Timmy Marlett very, very proud of you, Gavin, because not only have you completed the challenge, you walk home tonight with Channel 4's most glittering prize, the Golden Games Master Joystick! <laughs> So let's have another round of applause for our champion challenger, Gavin Hansford. <laughs> I 
As another challenger scales the dizzy heights of climactic ecstasy, we calm ourselves down just a tad to consider the offerings in this week's reviews. This week we get all cute and fluffy as we look at beat-em-ups. First up on the links, Dirty Larry is a cop gone bad as he tries to give drug dealer Mr. White a firm corrective hand through eight levels of punch-and-shoot mayhem. Dirty Larry is very similar to Final Fight. It's well presented, the graphics are gorgeous, and uh, for a Lynx game, this is certainly the best of its kind. Scrolling's really jerky, the animation's okay, and the sound's not exactly anything to write home about. Dirty Larry is crap of the worst order. Walk left, walk right, jump, punch, shoot. Uh, that's it. Best of the best, a kickboxing-tastic affair with 16 fighters and a whopping 55 moves to duff them up with. It's slick, it's fluid, it's quite deep considering it's a beat-em-up. Uh, the whole thing is incredibly professional. The best of the best is a fine attempt, but he's got Street Fighter 2 to compete against, and at the end of the day I know which one I'd probably be playing. The controls are sluggish and unresponsive. Best of the best, mediocre of the mediocre, more like. <laughs> Sonic Blastman, the Punch Mongus arcade game, becomes a scrolling fighty console thing with six levels and bonus stages. Walk along, smack people in the gob, um, smack some more people in the gob and kick a few people in the teeth, that's about it. Um, it's all done very nicely and with good humour. It's quite enjoyable and I'd recommend it to anyone who enjoys these scrolling beat-em-ups, but at the end of the day, it's just not original enough. <laughs> A lot of people say video games are just for kids. Well, Letty Edwards certainly proved them wrong when she became a golden joystick winner last year. We took her and two similarly funky oldsters to the Trocadero to spend some quality time together and find out exactly what makes them tick as far as games are concerned. First of all, they politely queued up for a shot of the Suzuka 8-hour motorbike game. <laughs> Well, I've got two Nintendos. I've got the first one that came out, and then they've got this 16-bit Nintendo. And I've also got the Sega Mega Drive. About six years ago, I bought the uh, Amiga. What was you can, Grandma? No, I can't do that. What was you can, Grandma? Anyway, she put it down, and while she was out of the room, and decided I would have a go, and that was it. Two hours and much burnt rubber later, the girls decided to have a try at virtual reality. They keep your mind alert when you're getting on a bit like me. I completed the lemmings, the first lemmings, in six weeks. We like Mario. We like the Mario Brothers because with the first, first one, Mario 1, my husband and I, we can both play. After a while, however, the true games playing nature of our dashing dames began to emerge. It makes you relax. The greatest achievement is on Tetris. About 146,000. Joan Thornley decided enough was enough and showed the world that her many years as British lightweight champion had not gone to waste on Sonic Blastman. We just can't leave it alone. We play it every night before we go to bed. We couldn't sleep without it. But the big question was, would any of our grannies be insane enough to try the rotating queasiness of the R360 machine? Letty Edwards was. When I watch television, it just sends me to sleep, but on my computer, I can just play for hours and hours. I just enjoy playing it, and it's very, very relaxing. And the final verdict? Brilliant. Oh, yeah. I feel safe. This week's celebrity guests thought those reviews and features were a joy to behold. All they'd like now is a little challenge to round things off. Let's comply with their craving and go over to Games Master. I am so pleased you've returned. It could get a mite isolated up here, not to mention a little chilly around the girders. Not that we won't warm you up with my second... <laughs> Aha! Time to settle some old scores. Don't mind me. <laughs> oh, yes, my second challenge. I've opted for a Wild West shootout on Mad Dog McCree 2, the last gold. Our trigger-happy contestant has three lives who wish to survive a shootout with a gang of mad dogs ruffians and rescue their female hostage. Keep those barrels blazing. 
packing a piece on this challenge is one of the stars of about 753,000 TV stage and screen extravaganzas. Please welcome professional funny woman, Josie Lawrence. <laughs> Welcome, Josie. All right. OK, thank you very much. Behave yourselves. OK, right. Josie, what do video games mean to you? Um, they mean absolutely nothing to me, because I've never played a video game in my life, and I'm really ashamed to admit that to you young people, but I I'm hopeless at them. They scare me. Oh, so I'm sure you can improvise. I'm sure, <laughs> yes. I I'd really like... There's a lot of video games where people kill each other. I, yeah. I think the video games I'd like were, yeah. would be if a little man went around snogging as many people as possible. You that know, would I be... I'll have a word with some of my me. friends, see if we can get one made for yes. you, Josie. <laughs> Thank you. Well, listen, all the best for this challenge. If you'd like to go and fondle your pistol in preparation, Thank we will go up and have a little chat with NMS main man Tim Boone, who's at my side once more. Tim, welcome. Howdy, Dominic. Now, Tim, Josie said she was a wee bit nervous. Is there anything you can do to relieve her? Sure, people are going to be coming at it from all sides. Shoot them all. And I would say to anybody else, shoot from the hip. But I think in Josie's case, shoot from the shoulder. OK, then. If you'd like to see how Josie Lawrence gets on in the wild and sometimes Willie West, join us after the break. <laughs> Welcome back to the Games Master Camp, where Josie Lawrence has flown out to try to tackle Mad Dog McCree 2. What she has to do is rescue two Wild West babes. Josie, are you ready? I sure am. Then off you go. Okay, so off goes Josie. She's got three legs. She's got our first guy down, no problem at all. Here comes a guy at the back. Oh, Take oh, him out. No, oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, no. Now, Josie's got three legs. She's lost one of them. Well, you got two lives left. Oh, sure, I shot that one. Choose your guy. There goes Josie. Second attempt here. Yay! That's now, one that the guy at the back. the back. He needs to go. There he is. Yeah, she's got him this time. He's kind of always got the guy walking around the sort of provisions there. Now, well, the guy... no, you need to oh. wait for the close up now. Shoot this guy. Well done. of Josie's actions there. Now, this is why Stagger's out. Quite <laughs> well. He's back in there, boy. Come on, partner. Let's go find that treasure. OK, yeah. that's him, Bunny. OK, now we're at the second stage here. Now, these bodies are locking all over the place, Tim. Oh, yeah, but we're yeah, going to talk. Now, they can come from absolutely anywhere, so be careful. But I've got a feeling. Oh, he's right in the cow park. Oh, oh dear, Mr. Oh, Smelly Things. <laughs> Oh, the guy in the basket. The guy in the basket. Here he goes. She's got him. Gone. She's doing very, very well here. Oh, he's making the slow on the left-hand side. Oh, she's got him. Nicely done. Oh, she's coming out. Here goes one shot, boy. He's history. It's done. Josie's done it. She's done away with sleeping, boy. Excellent. She's got the challenge. Yeah, they're very boisterous lot. Well. Very boisterous. I think, I, think it, I think it must be you. Listen, that was, that was amazing. You were really nervous before. But I was, that was really incredible. nervous, but I just had to save those women. Uh, uh, what, you looked at quite at ease with a pistol there, Josie. I'm yes, a bit... yes. Well, I can handle certain pistols, I suppose. Oh, OK. All right, well, let's hope you can handle this one, because as the winner tonight, you have won probably the biggest thing Channel 4 has to offer anyone, the Games Master Golden Joystick! <laughs> It's lovely, isn't it? Yes, I've, I'll have to go home and work out where to put it. All right, I'm sure you will. OK, let's have another round of applause for a brilliant winner, Josie Lawrence! <laughs> Thank you, Josie. <laughs> While we ruminate on the global implications of that titanic struggle, some more questions are answered in the consultation zone.
Hello, Games Master. What is it that is um, tormenting you? Is there a way to defeat the Stormtrooper transport in Super Star Wars? For novice game players, this is indeed um, rather difficult. At the beginning of the level, you should choose Chewbacca, as he has the highest stamina and will give you more time to dispose of the Empire's minions. When the transport enters the scene, go forward and crouch underneath it. From there, you should be able to take out the lower gun turret and the two back ones without losing too much energy. Now go to the right of the transport and take out the last remaining gun, leaving the vehicle defenseless. You should now have no trouble finishing it off. Thank you very much. Next. Hello, Games Master. On Pinball Fantasies, I can make the cheat for extra balls work, which you gave me last week, but I still cannot get a high score. Is there any other tips you could give me? Gosh, you really are displaying a remarkable lack of talent. You're in luck, however, for I do have another cheat in store. When the game scrolls down, showing you the table, quickly type in Digital Illusions. Now, your ball will never go out of play. If you can't amass a high score now, my heart bleeds for you. Thanks a lot. Time for just one more, I think. Hello, Games Master. Oh, just get on with your question, please, young man. On European club soccer on the Mega Drive, I can't get enough power into my kicks. What should I be doing? Rather a cheeky one, this. Go to the password screen and enter the word three on the top line, shredded on the second line, and wheat on the third line. You will now be blessed with shots of awesome power. Thanks a lot. Sometimes my knowledge surprises even myself. Time to give my grey cells a well-earned rest and see you anon. For our final challenge tonight, it's time for one of our special magazine challenges. You may remember earlier on in the series we had one on Street Fighter 2. Now it's the turn of Sega's Wunder Hedgehog Sonic 2. What we did was we asked four Sega magazines each to nominate their champion. We'll have a semi-final this week, one next week, culminating in the grand final in two weeks' time. So, for our first semi-final, please welcome Paul Davis from Mean Machine Sega and Dave Goodyear from Mega Drive Advanced Gaming. <laughs> Paul. Uh, all right, Dave. Right. Now, first of all, Paul, a lot of kids would love to work on a magazine. Is it all work, work, work? Or how much time do you actually spend playing games? Well, we spend about at least four hours a day playing the games. Um, but basically, there's a, a lot of writing. And uh, there's a lot of pressure to, you know, to get things finished. Well, I know, listen, up at Maverick, you work desperately hard, oh, Dave. Yeah, desperately hard. Now, you guys don't actually know the level you'll be playing yet, so to find out what the challenge is, let's go over to Games Master. Hmm, yes. Um, to start off the Sonic 2 challenge, I've opted for a speed test on the first level of the Emerald Hill Zone. Quite simply, whoever completes the level in the fastest time wins. Best of luck. So, now you know, speed challenge on Emerald Hill Zone 1. How do you fancy your chances, Paul? Well, I've been spiking Dave's coffee before the show, so uh, I'm hoping that, uh, that'll make a difference. All right, now, Dave, exactly what's he been spiking your coffee with? I don't know, it's probably something hot and wet. It probably is. All right. Listen, I think we'll have you, Paul, since you're the spiker, you can go first. If you'd like to sit yourself down in a games playing chair, Dave, linger menacingly behind. We'll get ready to start. As if Sonic the Hedgehog 2 wasn't special enough, I have the very special Jane Goldman from GameZone with me. Jane, welcome. Hi. Now, Jane, speed challenge, they can't hang about. Any tips for them? Well, every second counts here, don't we? So the secret is find the quickest route and find the speed boots. OK, let's hope our competitors bear that in mind. So it is the person who is the fastest to get through Emerald Hill Zone 1 goes through to the final. Paul, are you ready? Then off you go. Okay, so off goes Paul. Paul is actually Sonic, just ignore Tails. He'll just like funk about generally, Jane, won't he? Yes, he's a bit confusing, but never mind. 
Okay, he's got been going for 10 seconds here, and he's doing all right. He's not hanging about at all. He wants to find these speed boots, though. Only he avoided that spring and didn't go up higher, which may have been a mistake. Is it actually faster then to go the top route? A little bit. Okay, he's still doing... Oh, he managed to pick up a shield there. That's going to help him a little bit. It means he can throw caution to the wind. <laughs> okay. Although he isn't. Oh, and now he's, he's having a bit of problem here. He's going to hit the spring and... Oh, oh he made it. Okay, he's oh. gone for 30 seconds here. He's got another spring there to speed him up a little bit. Tails is meanwhile lingering by Oh, yeah, by he's him. picking up speed here. Oh, he missed the second spring. Now, this is going to be quite... This will be, I think, the stage which will separate the men from the boys in this challenge, Jim. You can lose an awful lot of time here. Now he's safe up the top there. Okay, he's been for 44 seconds here. This is Paul Davis from Mean Machine Sega. 40 a second, he's over the twisty bridge here. He's picked up some nice speed, but he's been knocked back oh, now. Oh, yeah, taking those rings is going to cost him a bit of time too. Okay, he's back up the top now. 56 seconds, he's gone. 56 seconds for Paul Davis from Mean Machine Sega. Okay, Paul, if you'd like to make way now for Dave. Jane, a, a brief verdict on Paul's performance. Well, I did say go along the top, and I did say speed boots, and he didn't listen. He ignored you twice. Right. Um, I pity any man who ignores you, Jane. OK, Dave, if you're ready, then off you go. 56 seconds to beat, then. Off goes Dave. A fairly sort of uh, normal ho-hum run of the mill start there. But he's gone the to top. Now, this yeah. is, ah, oh, this, this is, quite is it. it. This and is there's it. the speed boots, Jane, just oh. like you said. Now we're going he's to got an unfair some... advantage here. Oh, it's quite clear, Oh, no! Actually. Oh, dear. Well, that's okay. No, he's back. picked up. He's got to really take it slow and steady here. That's it. Now he's going over 23 seconds. Oh, he's, he's much... I think he's quite far ahead on the split time here. Oh, he's racing through he's this one. He's running away with it. I don't think this is going to be any competition now. None 30 what's... seconds! Hey. He's got it. 30 seconds! Dave Goodyear from Megan out Advanced Gaming wins the semi-final! Very impressive. <laughs> All right, quiet it down now. Now, first of all, Paul, it wasn't terribly close, that. What, you must have an excuse up your sleeve. Oh, well, he must have switched the drinks or something. Either that or I've been working far too hard recently. What have you got to say about that one, Dave? Um, well, unfortunately, I, I think I had the advantage because I, he, went, he went first and I went second. That's, so. a, that's very, very sporting of you, Dave. All right, well, it'll be nice to see if you're as sporting when you come back in two weeks for the grand final. How do you fancy your chances for that one, Dave? Well, we'll have to wait and see. I'll have to get some practice in and see how it goes. All right, then. It's nice to get such committed games players on the show. Let's have another round of applause there for Paul Davis and Dave Goodyear. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Well, we've run out of time once more. The dinner gong has sounded. Auntie Marisha's done us some halibut lightly tossed in brine. I'll see you next week. Good night. The Games Master Club is open to all our viewers. For the measly sum of £11.15, you get the club pack, which includes such modern essentials as challenge stopwatches, badges, posters, fact sheets, and much, much more. To join, send a cheque or post Lord of for £11.15 to the address on screen. Or you can call 0891 600 123. Calls are charged at 36 p.m. at cheap rate and 48 p.m. at all other times. You must have permission before you make the call.